First to Ethiopia, where warring sides, that's the federal government of Addis Ababa and the Tigray People's Liberation Front, or TPLF, in the northern region, have accepted an invitation by the African Union to resume peace talks or to start peace talks to end an almost two year long war. The talks are set to resume this weekend in South Africa, or they're set to start rather in South Africa, but they're likely to result, are they likely to result in the desired outcome? I've been speaking to Dr. Derese Kassa, who's the Associate Professor of Sociology at Iona University in New York, and I asked whether he was optimistic. Maybe optimistic uh, is an overreach, but I'm a prisoner of hope. So I would think, given what we've been through over the past two years, you know, the relentless fighting, the violence, uh, the death toll in the country on both sides, you cannot afford but to hope that the parties would finally come to the negotiation table and they would try to arrive at a political settlement. And so, yes, people are hopeful. The significance of this and the fact that both have accepted can't be underestimated, can it? Because this is the first time they're willing to really sit down face to face with yes. the AU negotiating in order to try and end this conflict, which has raged since 2020. Absolutely, Bola. And I think this also speaks very highly about how the AU, which has been criticized on both sides for not being proactive and bringing the warring parties to the table earlier, has, you know, gotten back its acts together, uh, of course, with the backing of uh, the international community. And so we're hoping that this new architecture uh, with Obasanjo at the helm and President Uhuru Kenyatta and Cuba of uh, South Africa would work out and that both sides would find some sort of a modus operandi to uh, resolve the issues and come out from the talks with at least, you know, a framework of what the next round of talks should look like. What do you think has changed this time round? Because you said the AU has now got its act together, but it has to be said that former President Obasanjo has been going back and forth, playing between Addis Ababa and Mekele uh, over the past year. Sometimes he's been snubbed by one side or the other. What now has made the difference? Because there have also been accusations and counter accusations about the AU with both sides at different stages saying why they don't trust African Union mediation wholeheartedly. I think at the outset, the TPLF felt like because the African Union itself is headquartered in the capital, Addis Ababa, and because, you know, there are some senior acquaintances with senior government officials in Addis, they felt like the AU or whoever is going to be appointed by the AU would not be an honest broker. And then came President Obasanjo's appointment. And first, there was a lukewarm reception on both sides, but the TPLF later on became very vocal, stating that President President Obasanjo has warmed up to Abiy Ahmed and that he's become partisan and he's not an impartial arbiter for the conflict. So, you know, as far as Obasanjo's role in the dialogue is concerned, the TPLF was very vocal. The Ethiopian government, on the other hand, was adamant that uh, be it the European Union or the United Nations or countries like the United States should not play the spearheading role of the initiative. And they uh, kind of stuck with this notion that we should be able to find an African solution for African problems. So what happened? happen right now is both parties seem to be exhausted and fatigued by the conflict and they feel like um, they have to find a political settlement out from this uh, you know quagmire and they felt like uh, they should give the AU the chance. So you're not worried by this uh, airstrike uh, in Adidairo um, which happened earlier this week you don't think that will scupper the talks? They can scuttle the talks, Bola. There is that possibility. But in my thinking, you know, because both parties have not yet committed to a cessation of hostilities, and that means hostilities are still going on, I feel like this first round of talks would be talks about the talks. It, there would be preliminary talks and you have to agree on the protocol. And most importantly, you have to carve out what the agenda items are for a comprehensive peace dialogue. So we're at the beginning of the beginning. And I don't think that could be halted unless otherwise, you know, either of the parties, uh, you know, pull the carpet underneath uh, before the weekend comes and surprise us. But I don't think they would do that because there is incredible pressure from the international community 
And I don't think both parties would want to lose grace in the eyes of public opinion in the world. Dr. Derese Kassa, who's Associate Professor of Sociology at Iona University in New York.